So if you want to get into AI coding, you must have heard about Cursor AI, but you may not know how to set it up or how to get started at all. Well, you're in luck because in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it from scratch on this old MacBook Air, which I've completely reset and installed from scratch. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Rob and I've been a developer for over 20 years, but now I teach founders on YouTube to build their next million dollar ideas with AI and automation. But with that said, let's go. So the first thing that you have to do is actually download Cursor. So for that, you go to cursor.com and then download it for whatever system you're on. I am on a Mac, so the entire video is designed for Macs, but I'm sure it works on all other platforms too. Cursor itself is available on macOS, Windows, and Linux, so you should be fine. And by the way, this is my link tree, which I've just built in Cursor yesterday. And we're going to build something simpler than this at the end of this video. So stay tuned. So first thing first, this is a Cursor Pro trial, which is what's going to happen when you download it and register for the first time. Then you click open project and you just choose a folder where you want to put your new development and new code and whatever in. I'm going to go to the desktop here and create a new folder. It is super important that you choose a name that is only letters and small letters and dashes. No exclamation marks, no uppercase letter, no spaces, nothing. Doing this will often result in problems, so just use something like test minus project. Then you click on open and that will basically open this folder in cursor. And all you have to do now is go to the top right and toggle the AI panel, which brings up the chat, which we can then ask the AI questions in. But oftentimes when you do download cursor, there's an update available. So just click update cursor and it will restart itself within a couple of seconds. And there we go. Now we can start asking it questions. But first, the latest version of cursor introduced something like an auto model selector. And that's terrible because it allows cursor to say what model to use, but they're really just two good models. So turn off this auto select and then choose either Claude 3.7 or Claude 3.5. 3.5 is better for some tasks, but 3.7 is usually the way to go. Now we ask it to create a Next.js 15 project for my website. Don't do anything else yet. You can use the same prompt and then just get started. Here is where it gets interesting. So you're gonna see that it's running a command or it wants to run a command on your computer for you to start creating the project. You just click run command. And now it's gonna say, oh, this tool is not available. Here's something that you need to know. Cursor requires a handful of tools, developer tools that are not installed by default. So when you are on a fresh system, when you're not a developer, this is exactly what you're going to see. The good thing is that Cursor will walk you through, take you by the hand and just check piece by piece what is currently working on your computer. So command by command, it will see, aha, this is not available, this is not available, and this is not available. Now it figured out that basically nothing is available on your system because it's a new system or you're just not a developer. So it starts installing it on your behalf. And here is something that you need to pay attention to. One of these commands is going, very likely going to ask you for your password. This is a one-time thing, you will never have to do it again. But right now you click into this box and you enter the same password that you used for your Mac. And after you've done that, you just press enter and then it will ask you one more question if you want to continue the installation. So press return slash enter, do it again. And then you will see it will download a lot of stuff in the background. I'm going to speed this up here, but in reality, this is going to take a few minutes. Then when it's done, it's going to tell you that now you have to run another command. So just whenever you see the blue button, press the button and it will continue to do its thing until everything is installed. Now it's installing another thing. That is the most important thing. Actually, it's Node. Node is the software that runs everything that you build or most of the things that you build on your system. You don't really need to know this, but now it says it was actually installed and now it wants to verify if it's working. So once again, you click the blue run command button and then it will run the check and it says, great, 
Node.js and NPM, you don't really need to understand what they are. The fact is, now they are successfully installed. Mind you, this was a completely fresh system. There was nothing on it before, so these commands should work for you. But if they don't, just leave a question in the comments down below and I'll help you there. And maybe I'll make a video if enough people have problems with something. Okay, so now it says great. Everything was successfully installed. Now we can go back to the first command that it was trying to run, which is actually setting up the project. Here's something else that you need to know. So far, I have asked you to always click the blue button, but you don't always have to do that. Cursor gives you this opportunity here to say ask every time or auto run. There are downsides of auto run, but it is generally such a quality of life improvement that I would highly recommend you turn it on. Cursor will warn you that you should be cautious. There are problems with it. You will burn through the credits that you get every month much faster, right? You might be exposed to some what's called prompt injection, but that is just if you don't read these prompts or if you don't make an effort to avoid obvious problems, if that makes sense. So we're just gonna continue with the blue button one last time. Actually, there's gonna be one more blue button, but then we are good to go. So from here, just press it one last time. And from now on, it shouldn't ask you to run any commands anymore. Except for this one, because now it will ask you and here's something. So everything that happened until now, you only had to do one time. So the next time you don't have to do this anymore. This is now all installed permanently on your system. So from now on, every time you open cursor, all you have to do is open a new project and start prompting away. And that's it. And when you do, this is the type of stuff that happens. So now it tries to create a fresh project. And depending on the project that you try to create, often it will ask you if you are okay to proceed, if you want to install specific packages. This you don't really need to understand this for now, especially when you're prototyping. Just click into this box and press enter. There are reasonable standards or defaults where you can just press enter and this will be what most people want to do most of the time anyway. Would you like to install this? Yeah, just press enter. Just keep pressing enter until it stops asking you questions. So now again, I'm speeding this up. This will take a couple of minutes sometimes subject to your internet connection and how fast your computer is. But eventually it will have set up the entire project. And very critically, it will tell you something along the lines of to start the development server, you can run this command. But here's what it doesn't tell you. It has actually already done this for you. And this is very common and sometimes it's a bit annoying, but when you see a new tab open that looks like this, it basically means that cursor already ran the environment that you need, the test server, the development server, and that will give you a link that you can actually go to. So you see here, there's two links, one local, one network, ignore the network one, just go to the local one, click on the blue link, and then your browser will open. And just like that, we have a development environment. And from here, things get really interesting because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the cursor environment a little bit smaller and the browser a little bit smaller. And I do that because then we can see both things at the same time. And that's really great because the browser in the environment that we have right now will auto update. So while cursor develops on your behalf, while you ask it things, the browser will continue to update automatically. You don't need to go and press refresh or something like that. No. You can just say, okay, now create a simple link tree website. That's exactly what I promised you will do in the beginning. I'm speeding this part up again. This will also take a few minutes, but in the end, it will present you with a link. Sometimes it will present you with a link. Sometimes it will, like usually it will upgrade automatically. But now this is what we have. Now we have a full link tree that you can customize and continue. And that's what we're going to do. So now make it black instead, like a dark mode. And you will see in a second, uh, this is all sped up. This will all be longer than this, but I wanted this video to be very fast. Now you will see the link tree clone here is slowly going to turn black. So now it updated the background and all the buttons. 
And that's pretty much it. So now it will tell you exactly what it did. But in a nutshell, guys, this is exactly how to set up and start using Cursor from a system that wasn't a developer before. And now every time you start Cursor, that's what you want to do. And if you want to know how I built my link tree, then watch this video right here.